the moment of inertia of a hoop. Find the moment of inertia of a hoop that is a thin walled hollow ring with mass capital M and radius capital R about an axis perpendicular to the hoop's plane at an edge. So this is what it looks like. We have a hoop. Uh, so basically it's a ring. And uh, this is the central axis, uh, so rotation axis that goes through the center of mass of the hoop. And here is the edge, so we have a rotation axis that is parallel to the z-axis uh, in this picture. And as you can see, when we look at a differential uh, mass element here, when we are, because we are at a distance capital R, the uh, arc length here will be equal to capital R times d theta. So this will be uh, used to calculate the mass of that element. Okay, so uh, first of all, we ignore the wall thickness. So that's the first thing to note here. And uh, this is basically, it's not mentioned that it's a non-uniform mass distribution. So we're assuming that it's a uniform mass distribution in this hoop. The mass density we're going to call a lambda because it's one dimensional will be equal to the total mass capital M divided by the circumference 2 pi capital R. So if we calculate the mass of this mass element dm it will be equal to lambda times ds where ds is equal to r capital R d theta. So we're at a distance capital R so the arc length will be capital R d theta. So we have a small change in the angle causing a small uh, arc length uh, capital R d theta. So this will give us lambda times capital R d theta for the mass. So our mass distribution, uniform mass distribution gives us a mass density capital M divided by 2 pi r this multiplied with capital R d theta will give us capital M divided by 2 pi d theta. Now we can calculate the moment of inertia for a rotation axis that goes through the center of mass. It's integral over all possible angles 0 to 2 pi. The distance from the rotation axis is capital R, so capital R square dm. So it's integral R square dm. So this will give us integral from 0 to 2 pi. Um, we have dm equals capital M over 2 pi. So uh, we can put that here, capital M, capital R square divided by 2m d theta. So uh, capital M r square divided by 2 pi comes out of the integral because it's a constant. Integral over the angle d theta from 0 to 2 pi will give us just 2 pi. So these 2 pi's will cancel and we will be left with moment of inertia capital M R square. So this is our intermediate answer. Now to obtain our final answer we have to move from the center of mass rotation axis to the rotation axis that goes through the edge. So we have a rotation axis that is parallel to the center of mass rotation axis. So we can use parallel axis theorem I center of mass plus capital M times the distance between the two rotation axes squared. So here we have uh, the distance between the two rotation axes 
equal to R. So that is capital R. So the parallel uh, axis moment of inertia will be capital M R squared plus capital M R squared. Therefore, our final answer will be 2 capital M R squared. Okay. Uh, so basically, we have utilized the parallel axis theorem. Okay. So we're trying to calculate the moment of inertia of a hoop. It's a thin walled hollow ring. So it's just a ring. We have one dimensional mass distribution. The hoop has total mass capital M and radius capital R. We want to know the moment of inertia for a rotation axis perpendicular to the hoop's plane at an edge. So it's basically on the ring somewhere. So uh, first of all, we ignore the wall thickness because this is a uniform mass distribution. Uh, we're assuming a uniform hoop. Uh, the mass density will be capital M divided by the total length of the ring, which is the circumference, 2 pi capital R. If we concentrate on a mass element here, for a small change in the angle d theta, we have an arc length, capital R d theta, um, that is the length of this segment. And the length of the segment multiplied by the mass density gives us the mass of that segment, dm, which is capital M over 2 pi d theta. Now, the Definition of moment of inertia is integral r squared dm, integral over all possible space. Well, the space is uh, basically exhausted by angle, uh, changing the angle theta from 0 to 2 pi. Then I will be um, counting all possible mass segment contributions. And they are all at a distance capital R from the center. So capital R squared dm integral from 0 to 2 pi gives me the answer for dm. I substitute capital M over 2 pi d theta, which gives me m r squared as the answer. However, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a moment of inertia for an edge axis that is parallel to the center of mass, uh, a rotation axis that goes through the center of mass. And there I can use parallel axis theorem. If d is the distance between the two parallel rotation axes, if you know the moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass uh, axis here, moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass axis plus md square, which is mr square, will give us our final answer as 2 capital M capital R square.